Well, welcome everybody. It is wonderful to have you at our first panel. Um, and I did not turn off the captions, so I will also be captioned on this uh, PowerPoint. Um, so welcome everybody to our first panel of the spring. Um, the title of our panel series is Computer Science, IT, Cybersecurity, Oh My. And the reason that we are hosting through Transfer Virginia this panel series is because we had heard from advisors and through advisors from students that frequently students are interested in going into a computer science or IT or cybersecurity or something related field. And they're not sure what their options are as transfer students and they're not sure what the best field for them is. Um, so we decided to put together a panel and invite our four-year partners in computer science, IT, cybersecurity, who have, <clears throat> excuse me, transfer-friendly programs to come and talk about their programs. Um, so today we're joined by ODU and George Washington University, and I'll be introducing um, those panelists in just a couple of minutes. Um, but I'm gonna start by introducing myself. I'm Nicole Hutchison. I'm the Director of Transfer here for the Virginia Community College System. And I work closely with Emily and Chev. And I am Emily Munez. I am with the State Council of Higher Education for Virginia. I'm the Associate for Transfer and Talent Pathways. Um, I'm also a co-chair of the Transfer Advising Peer Group in the Virginia Community College System. Um, and so this was, um, this topic was decided upon due to some feedback from them. So we're glad that you all could join us. Uh, so um, we will be recording this, as you all heard, and um, we posted on our Transfer Virginia YouTube channel, which students and advisors can access through the portal. Um, so I want to, before I introduce our panelists and start asking them questions about their programs, um, I wanted to just very quickly introduce you to Transfer Virginia, because I don't know that everybody on the panel or in the audience is familiar with Transfer Virginia. Transfer Virginia is a pretty big umbrella. Under that Transfer Virginia umbrella, we have our passport, our uniform certificate of general studies and all of our transfer associate degrees. Through Transfer Virginia, we revise and develop courses. We develop common curricula. Those are the paths to majors and we have common curricula in information technology as well as computer science. Um, the common curricula become transfer guides created by the four-year schools so that our students at the community colleges know what their options are and what courses they take in order to get to that bachelor's degree. Um, and those are connected with guaranteed admission agreements, guaranteed program admission agreements. All this information lives on our portal. Um, but today we're focusing on the last thing that's under the big umbrella of Transfer Virginia, which is advising and making sure that advisors and the students whom they advise are aware of the myriad options throughout the state. I'm really excited today that we have a, a private college and a public college, because um, I, I love for students to be able to compare different programs and learn about different programs that aren't necessarily in their part of the state. Um, and so we have Northern Virginia, we have um, the, the Virginia Beach area. Um, and so students will have the opportunity and advisors will have the opportunity to learn about actually kind of four programs because each of you are talking a bit about two different programs um, at very different institutions. But in both cases, they are institutions and programs that are very welcoming of transfer students and um, are providing some really promising pathways to transfer students. Um, all of this information is on the Transfer Virginia portal. I just wanted to pull up that slide so that you would be aware of um, the portal. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Um, and I'm going to introduce our panelists. And the way that we're going to structure today's panel is I'm going to ask each of the institutions, um, and I'll start with George Washington because they're first on my list here. Um, to give a very brief overview of their program, like three to five minutes. They were invited to bring slides if they wanted to, or they can just talk through their program. It's a very high level overview of the program. Um, so we'll start with George Washington. 
three to five minutes for that overview, and then ODU, three to five minutes for that overview. And then Emily and I have a series of questions and we're going to go back and forth. So um, when I ask the first question, I'll start with George Washington or ODU and let you all answer and then move on to the other institution. Um, there will be time for questions from the audience for those of you who are attending live. Um, so if you have questions, you're welcome to put them into the chat at any time. Uh, we may be re able to respond to them in real time or pose them at the end of the presentation today. Um, and uh, I'm sure that our presenters will also provide contact information if you have questions later. Um, so I'm going to start by introducing our George Washington University College of Professional Studies folks. Um, we're joined by Dr. Scott White, who is the Program Director for the Bachelors in Cybersecurity, and Tierney Pitzer, who is the Program Director for the Bachelors in Information Technology. So Scott and Tierney, do you want to talk a bit about your program? Uh, sure. Um, let me, if, if I may share quickly, I'll bring up a quick PowerPoint slide deck, just, and then I'll give my colleague ample time to respond. Thank you very much uh, for allowing us to join you today. Um, yes, we are a private university, but we also have to keep in mind we're a private nonprofit university. Um, but uh, I've been with GW for eight years now. We started the program eight years ago. Um, this is the program here. Let me just advance my slide. There we go. Oop, one too many. Um, that's my curriculum there on the right-hand side. We are a degree completion program. Students come to us from community college uh, or university with 60 transferable credits. The only one that we look for that doesn't come in the AAS and cyber from NOVA is the science, the four-year science degree uh, class rather. So that's what we just asked. We ask uh, our, our, our new applicants to do the four credit lab science. Um, and then we have a pathways agreement that we bring all 60 credits into our program. We're very fortunate because we actually have the Dean of Technology, uh, Paula Ford from NOVA, uh, the associate dean, uh, Judy uh, Bartlett, and the head of cyber for Woodbridge, uh, KK, who actually teaches in my program. So we're very fortunate to have those colleagues join us. Uh, cybersecurity is one of the fastest growing fields in technology. Um, no matter what, if you look at the Department of Labor or any other set of statistics, you will find that the market is only growing in this discipline. We leverage the uh, NSA CA, CAE, the, uh, the uh, CISSP, which is the industry standard for cyber, and the National Initiative on Cyber Education uh, for our curriculum. We took the pillars from there. So we're, we're very happy with the curriculum. It's very robust. We're constantly uh, changing it. In terms of degree paths, we look obviously for the technology ones from NOVA, but we will take non-scientific students. We have some pathway courses on our website for NOVA students to take. Here is the requirements to get in. It's pretty straightforward, transferable. And my contact information and Lynn McKnight, the assistant director of recruiting for my program, hers is there. So that's all I'm going to say for now. I'm going to let Tierney jump in and talk a bit about her program. So uh, colleague, please. Yes. Yeah. All right. So also at GW, at the College of Professional Studies, we also offer a bachelor in information technology. Um, as Dr. White mentioned, we are located in Northern Virginia. So I know many of you think of GW being in DC. That is our main campus. But we also have satellite campuses in Northern Virginia. Um, Dr. White's cybersecurity program is in Woodbridge, Ashburn, and Arlington. And our bachelor in IT is in Ashburn and Arlington. Um, Similar to IT, similar to cybersecurity, um, the IT program accepts 60 transferable credit from BCCS or any other accredited school. And then the student will complete 60 credits at GW in just five semesters, depending on when they start and how many credits they do each semester. But the traditional path is in just five semesters, they are completing a bachelor's degree. Um, to get a little bit more specific about our IT program and the classes that transfer. So the IT degree is a broad view of different IT topics. And so the IT degree, we accept any associate's degree or 60 transferable credits. 
You must have some gen ed courses that include English 111, English 112, Math 154 or higher, four credit lab science, three credits of art, six credits of social science, no grades lower than a C, overall GPA 2.7. All of this information is indeed on the Transfer Virginia portal, and I'm happy to give you that link in the chat. Um, courses that you take at GW for this IT program, Python programming, we have two classes in cloud, database and SQL, our math is stats, so you're programming also with R, agile project management, what is just used in the industry, technical writing as our writing, data visualization, uh, intro to AI, and a capstone project. And I'm happy to um, talk more later at, during the Q&A session. Wonderful. Thank you. Those are great introductions. And we will have panel questions for after um, Old Dominion uh, is introduced here. So we're joined at Old Dominion from Old Dominion by Tamara Barnes, who's the Tech Talent Coordinator. Um, and Dr. Ayman Elma Salami um, is here to talk about the Bachelors of Science in Computer Science. And Lenora Thorbjornsson is here to talk about the cybersecurity track. Um, so if I could ask you all to introduce yourselves um, further and talk a little bit about your program, programs. Well, I'll go real quick because I'm the quick one. Um, so my name is Tamara Barnes. I am the tech talent representative here. Um, that means that um, I'm on the grant funded to help computer science engineering. And I also do prospective advising for cybersecurity here at ODU. So if you need some help with, you have prospective students that want to have more information and they're in either engineering, computer science, or cyber, you can send them my way and I can help them out prospectively. And I'll go second. Uh, my name is Ayman El Salami. I am the undergraduate program director for the computer science department at uh, Old Dominion University. And I have a presentation that I need to share with you, like three to five minutes, but uh, I'll see, shall I start now or more people? That would be perfect. Very good, thank you. Okay, so the department is computer science and um, it is actually part of the College of Science. Um, we have a four years program in computer science. The student can either take Bachelor of Science in Computer Science or Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with teaching licensure. And this is good for um, students who want to be high school teachers uh, teaching either IT or computer science. Um, our programs are available for online and also in cam on campus students. Uh, our program is a bit accredited because accredited because many students ask about that. Uh, we have a linked program where a student can finish both undergrad and master degree in computer science and data science and cybersecurity as three different majors in five years, which means it's just one year in addition to the four years to complete post degrees. We have also programs for double majors and the student can finish that in five years. Transfer students, our program is attractive to transfer students. We have many resources for the transfer students, including transfer mentors. The primary programming language for our department is Java. However, we also teach Python and C++, but Python and C++ are second programming languages. Um, we accept the transfer student who completed the classes either in Java C++ or Python, and that's why our program is attractive to transfer students. Um, career opportunities, there are a huge number of, there is a huge number of um, careers available. Um, I will not read that, however, I will leave it for the student because this is just a small fraction of the possible opportunities where the student can work after graduation. 
Um, I think one of the things you, you asked about whether we have internship for the students, we have internship for the undergraduate students at all levels, 100, 200, 300, and 400. So it's available for students who start here at the, uh, right after the high school or the transfer student if they come to ODU as junior or senior student. Um, we're trying to involve our undergraduate students in research. We have many opportunities for that. I personally uh, supervise many undergraduate projects for research. Um, sometimes I have fun. Most of the faculty here, they have fun, and we pay the students as well to do the research. We have many opportunities. We also allow our undergraduate students to participate in the system stuff, and we have a huge number of that. Many of these students were hired by either the university or in other respectable uh, industry organizations. Uh, we're trying to have partnership with different communities, including NASA and Jefferson Lab. Um, we invite many speakers and help the students to build resumes and to build networks. I think that's all what I want to share. Wonderful. Thank you. We will have more questions for you in a few minutes. Lenora, did you have anything to add to that before? I do have a few slides about our School of Cybersecurity. Perfect. For you guys. All right, so our School of Cybersecurity programs are actually housed under the interdisciplinary schools. That's our umbrella term for uh, most of our IDS or inter interdisciplinary majors. The IDS schools also include our new School of Data Science and the new School of uh, Supply Chain Management um, at ODU. So if you're interested in either of those topics, I'm happy to share as well. Uh, but with our cybersecurity program, we have a few academic programs available. Um, we have our large program, which is cybersecurity. It's a bachelor's of science. It is a 120 to 136 credit major, depending on the track students take. Because the interesting thing about IDS majors is we like to say that uh, cyber and similar fields cannot be addressed from a single lens. So our program actually pulls courses from around campus. So we partner with our peers in computer science, IT, as well as areas like computer engineering, psychology, philosophy, political science, criminal justice. If you think of anything cyber, we pulled it into our main track. I like to call the cybersecurity bachelors our choose your own adventure program on campus. Um, that program also houses an interdisciplinary studies minor, similar theme there. You can pull classes from different areas and it's a great partnership um, or a great partner program to have with any other uh, cyber IT or CS related degrees. Our second program is cyber operations, which tends to be a little bit more prescriptive, meaning you don't get as many choices for the curriculum. It's very much geared towards the um, CAE or Center of Excellence designation we have from the NSA in cyber operations. So the curriculum is completely designed around that model. It's fairly heavily technical, which also means higher levels of mathematics and programming required because we borrow quite a few classes there from our computer science and computer engineering partners. Um, I forgot to mention that our cybersecurity major, the larger program, also has the um, NSA Center of Excellence designation in cyber defense. Um, so we're very proud that we have those two. Our other major that just started last semester is a cyber risk management, which is a partnership a bit closer with our College of Business. So in addition to cybersecurity courses, students are taking courses in IT, uh, risk management uh, methodologies, a few laboratory classes, and then we also have uh, things like insurance, um, and again, like actuary sciences folded in there. And then I do like to mention two other programs on campus related to our School of Cybersecurity. Um, one is actually a graduate program. I know that me a little bit early, but we have a 30 credit or one year, if you go full-time, uh, master's degree. That's a non-dissertation track, but it does culminate in a required master's project or experiential learning program. My favorite reason for mentioning this is it's actually a linked program, much like CS, which has options to link the bachelor's to master's, where students can actually begin taking graduate courses in their senior year that it can apply towards both degrees. Um, and I know CS has it because they were kind enough to share some of their policies when we were getting our program off the ground. That is an option for a number of majors at ODU as well, if anyone's thinking grad school or has that as a possibility moving forward. And then the other program is technically not in the School of Cybersecurity, but our School of Arts and Letters hosts a cybercrime major and minor that I do like to mention. 
Fun fact about the School of Cyber, it was opened in 2020, but our majors actually existed as far back as 2015. We used to be, all of us, housed under the College of Arts and Letters, so I like to say we left cybercrime behind so they wouldn't miss us anymore. Uh, last slide I want to end with is just a little bit about involvement on campus. In addition to supporting research activities um, and experiential learning, things like internship, we also partner regularly with our student involvement department to host learning communities where students take a series of classes together. We have three active student organizations in the department, a women in cyber group, our homegrown CS2A, which is a cybersecurity student association. And we are also uh, the home of CVCSA, which is the Coastal Virginia Cybersecurity Association. It's actually a regional student group, which I think is really cool. It's not necessarily tied to a university. We're just helping support them as we're the hub for CCI um, in the local area. And CCI, apologies, is the Commonwealth Cyber Initiative. They've got a lot of really neat um, grants, research opportunities, internship opportunities on their website. So if you haven't heard of CCI before, go ahead and look up CCI Virginia, it's lovely. Um, I do also like to mention and stress internships, experiential learning is huge for us. Students will leave with some kind of hands-on research, internship or entrepreneurship activity. There's no getting around that for graduation. And then we also do um, partner very heavily with our service learning uh, department. Um, one particular program we piloted this semester is a cybersecurity internship clinic that I think is really neat. Um, students in that program are being supervised by our internship director on campus, and she has them working with small nonprofits, local businesses, mom and pop shops, essentially anywhere that doesn't have embedded cyber services, and they are going out and being cyber consultants for these companies. So it counts as their internship requirement, but it's also a bit of service learning so we can get back to the local community. And I will be happy to answer additional questions as we get into the panel. Wonderful. Thank you all. I'm very excited to have two kind of different programs from two kind of different universities. Um, so Emily and I are going to ask some questions to the panelists and we'll identify which college we're asking first. Since we have two programs from each college, when you respond, if you don't mind reminding the audience which program you're representing, that would be great. Um, so for all of our attendees here, we have George Washington University's College of Professional Studies with their bachelor's degree in cybersecurity and the bachelor's degree in information technology. Um, and then from ODU, we have a bachelor's of science in computer science and this, the interdisciplinary cybersecurity with also, you mentioned the cyber operations and cyber risk management. Um, so we have a lot of different options, opportunities, programs for students. Um, and I know you're not going to be able to dive as deeply into any one of those programs or institutions as you probably could, but I appreciate seeing the um, links going into the chat and contact information there. And I'll reiterate that you all should feel free to drop in the audience, drop questions into the chat. Um, but Emily and I are gonna start now. I'm gonna start with a question and I'll um, throw the question first to George Washington. Um, one or both of your programs can respond to the question and then I'll throw the same question to ODU. Um, but my question is, tell us about the typical student in your program. Why have they joined the program? What do they hope to get out of it? Are they transfer students? Are they traditional students? Do they all come in with an IT background or IT work experience? So I know it's a totally unfair question to say, tell me about the typical student, because I bet in both cases, you'll say there is no typical student, but give us something. Tell us a bit about the, the typical student and George Washington, I'm throwing it to you first. Tierney, do you wanna go ahead and start? Sure. Um, the typical student for our IT program at GW CPS is coming out of a VCCS school. Um, most of our students are coming from Northern Virginia Community College because we are located in Northern Virginia. Or then, you know, if looking at other students, we do have some other students transferring in from different schools or maybe career switchers of uh, joining an IT program for the first time. Yeah, when we first started, um, and again, I concur with my colleague, uh, we're predominantly uh, one of the community colleges. So we deal with Nova Germana, of course, in Virginia. We also deal with our colleagues across the river at uh, Montgomery Community College. Um, when we first started the program, that many of them were adult learners with uh, already employed. They had done their two years at one of our 
uh, uh, partner agencies and then came to us. But today we're seeing a lot more students come directly from our community college partners directly into our program. Um, we're, we, we've got students of all backgrounds. Uh, we, we actually, we reflect Nova. We reflect Nova's population, diversity in gender, diversity in race and ethnicity. Um, it's, it's an eclectic group of students. They come to us very well educated, uh, which makes our job very easy. Uh, cyber and IT are done exceedingly well in the Nova system. So that makes our job so much easier and then we get to us. But um, not only, uh, many of them are part-time workers, but many of them are seeking jobs while they, uh, while they do our degrees. Um, it's, they're just a lovely group of people and we're very fortunate to have them in our program. Fantastic, thank you. And ODU for both of your programs, tossing the same question your, your way, tell us about the typical student in your program. Okay, I'm gonna start with computer science. Um, are we focusing only on the transfer student or we can also share experience from students who come from high school? Either way. Okay. So we have big different, a, big, a huge variety of students joining our program. Some students come right after high school and some students come as a transfer student. It depends on how many credits can be transferred. Usually we accept the basic number, which is the 60 hours of transfer for all Virginia, but some students uh, have more transfer hours because they completed, for example, some programming classes at other universities. So we're trying to help them as much as we can. Uh, being very close to the naval base here and military base um, in this area, um, we receive a big diversity of students. Some students come with some backgrounds in computer science or IT, and some you don't have any background. We're trying to help them as much as you as we can to complete the degrees in, in the minimum number of semesters. We're trying to offer courses in different varieties and different format online, on campus, hybrid. Um, even for things which we have labs and recitation, we're trying to have offer them online. Um, we're trying to make sure the students, the lectures, labs, and uh, recitations as well are, are all video recorded, even if a student enrolled on campus and missed it because of the military duties, they can watch the video during the week, but at the end of the week, they have to submit all requirements in order to be successful. So we have a huge number of variety here. Uh, we noticed the increase in the number of women in computer science and the STEM. Um, it's a considerable increase in the number. Um, I don't know, but it could be due to the flexibility or being close to the naval base again. So, Lenora. Well, thank you for covering all the hard details. Um, I will just jump in with a little bit more about our cyber program. Um, our population is very similar. Of course, ODU brings in a, a diverse variety of students, just like uh, up in Nova with GW. Um, I do want to focus in a bit on our transfer population. So we get, as you might expect, quite a pool of students from Tidewater Community College, located just down the street here. We do see some students joining us from Nova, as well as some of our community college partners in the west of the state. Um, when we first started back in 2015, we had all homegrown ODU students who are actually changing majors. Uh, we slowly grew, that was about 11 students, we slowly grew largely because of our transfer population as the years went on. This past fall, we welcomed our count of the class as uh, 1,500, I think, total for our populations. Uh, we find that our transfer populations continue to grow, both because we found our transfer students to be very successful here, and because we have quite a number of pathways to the university. Um, I know everyone mentioned that in our introduction, my bad guys. Uh, so our pathways do include the traditional transferable degrees. Uh, we find that the sciences degrees, the CS degree, do better for our students. We will welcome students with the liberal arts and social science transfer degrees, but there may be just a little bit more ground to make up when you come in, depending on your math placement. And then we are very proud of our um, articulation agreements with the community college system. Those, of course, are special pathways in for students completing applied associates of science, to turn that to your transfer track um, into a reality, whereas applied associates don't always transition over. 
Um, age isn't really something we have a specific metric to track here that we look at because our program student population is so diverse. But we do have two ongoing committees in the School of, uh, School of Cybersecurity. One is a bridge program, largely designed at career switchers going into the master's degree. Um, the other is a broadening diversity and inclusion committee, which is working on, they founded the Women in Cyber chapter on campus, and they're also working on community efforts as well as efforts in ODU to increase um, diversity in the field, but women and women of color are a huge focus for that group as well, as I think we all know. Um, most of our students who come in are, I think at this stage, transfer students. We do have a large population of um, first year traditional freshman level students. Uh, but again, there's not a, a huge area to track because uh, we see anybody and everybody at ODU. And I will echo, of course, the messages from our computer science program. We do also have a rather flexible curriculum model in terms of enrollment options and modality. So we offer courses in person in an asynchronous format, as well as a synchronous online format with live lectures. Thank you so much. That's a perfect segue for the next question. And um, all of you have kind of touched on this a little bit, but if you could just pinpoint what makes your individual programs transfer friendly. Um, and we'll start with ODU this time. Jump back in. I'm still fresh from talking. Um, so in addition to the services we have in the department, which include tutoring and peer mentoring, um, and our wonderful supports from our transfer centers, um, working with Tamara. Uh, we have quite a bit um, going on to support transfer students. We also have a faculty mentorship and a peer-to-peer -peer from the master's to undergraduate internship to assist with that transition as students are coming in. And then while I know it sounds minorly punitive, we do require our transfer students to come in for academic advising, their first and second semesters on campus. That is a requirement before they are allowed to register for the next semester. And it's not intended to be a barrier to registration, but it's a way for us to check in on our students, make sure the transition is going well, and then also echo some career exploration options. As again, most of our programs are fairly diverse in terms of class choices. And we want that ROI at the end of, uh, end of graduation. We got to get something out of your degree to make that energy and money worth it. Okay, I think uh, Lenora covered pretty much all what I want to say because we are work at the same university and uh, one of the major things which we are here at ODU proud of is the uh, transfer um, resources which we have and the transfer uh, mentors which um, Tamira can talk more about it more than me. She is the best person to uh, talk about that. And um, Again, we covered most of the information in the first question um, about the students here. We have a big variety of students joining our departments. We're trying to make it easy environment. The other thing that makes our program attractive to the transfer student is the programming language. We are flexible with that. Um, we changed our focus in the last couple of years. We, before that, we only focusing with the, our major focus was C++, but we switch it now to be the major focus is Java. However, we still accepting a student with C++ and Python. So any programming language that's object oriented, we take the student, we uh, recognize their transfer credits, and this is encouraging the student. The other thing for sure is the tuition here okay, is um, because it's um, a public school and our tuition is very low compared to other universities. This is a big encouragement for the students to join our transfer program. Thank you. And then if uh, GW, if you all would like to go. Yes, so for our GW IT program, and for both of our programs, actually, all of our students are indeed transfer students, because as we mentioned earlier, they're coming from VCCS or some of the other community colleges or other schools. Um, for the GW IT program, we accept any associate's degree, so we can transfer in any of the VCCS associate's degrees. Um, for both of our programs, we're also very flexible in the gen eds that are required, and we're happy to get the details out to you, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, but in general, we require English, three credits of humanities, six credits of 
um, social science and four credits of lab science and perhaps a few other requirements, but those are the general gen eds um, that are required. Another thing to mention about transfer students is for our IT program, it is introductory in nature. So um, we welcome business students, other students from you know other associate degrees, not necessarily just IT students. Um, we do have some students transferring in from business or other associate degrees, and they're learning IT for the first time. Yeah, and I would uh, I would just add to that that I think you know one of the things that we see in our students in terms of pathways is that um, and I and I go back to Harkin what Scott Rawls said, and Scott was very happy with the arrangement that we had with our Nova partner specifically because we're very transparent. We keep um, our Nova colleagues up to date on if there's any changes. Um, we have very definitive pathway agreements. Um, we, my program at Cyber, actually takes the AAS degree on face value, which I think is a great uh, opportunity for um, non-traditional students that weren't looking at a four-year college. So that's a great benefit uh, for there because they come to us. You know, we have to remember that most nursing programs are AAS programs. You know, they're not AAS programs, they're, but they're AAS. So we find the students that are coming to us from NOVA with the AAS are highly competent in the discipline. So we actually have no problems in the transition. Um, one of the interesting things about GW is that we actually, our college um, is classified as off-campus, which is a unique, a unique entity. As an off-campus college or off-campus programming, we have a much more reduced, reduced rate. So when you begin to look at our uh, state partners or state colleagues at universities and the cost and you look at ours, it's actually not that that different when you get down to the pricing. Uh, when you add in all the fees that come uh, at a state school sometimes, the dollar value is not that different. But here's the interesting thing about that. Although we're classified as off campus, um, our students are actually get all the same things that a downtown Foggy Bottom student would get. The only thing they wouldn't get is housing, um, but they can actually even get meal plans if they like. Um, so we're, and you know, my program, for example, we operationalize on Nova Woodbridge's campus, um, the workforce development building, which is an absolutely beautiful building. Um, we're very fortunate to be able to operationalize from that location. We operationalize from here at the Virginia Science and Technology Campus. And yes, Chev, we are a, as you know, we are a Virginia University. And of course, we have the Arlington Education Center, which is down in, in Arlington. Um, and uh, so because we're running three different locations, that actually facilitates uh, a lot of our students as well, which they find attractive. These are some great answers to these questions. You guys are doing great. Um, so prior to being at Chev, I was a transfer counselor and this, you know, cybersecurity, computers, um, was always a little daunting to advise students about just because there are so many avenues that students can take. Um, and so many students in their first year or two of college know that they wanna go into IT or you know, do something with computers, but they aren't necessarily sure of what options are available to them um, or which field you know, might be the best fit. Um, what advice do you have on how they can make the right decision about what degree and career to pursue um, given all of these options? And we'll again, start with uh, George Washington this time. Yes. So um, my advice in general would be to look at the classes that are being offered by that four year program um, and look at to see if those topics look interesting to you. Number one. Um, secondly, I'll speak for IT. IT degrees at any university can be quite different. So that's where I come back to say, look at the classes that are offered for that particular IT program to see if that is interesting. For our GW IT program, uh, this is where we touch upon many different topics. So we do a little bit of Python programming. We do a little bit of stats so that you're programming in R and you're able to do data visualization. We do a little bit of cloud. Um, we have an intro to IT class. We do some technical writing. So in our IT program, we're touching upon different topics. And so that would be some, if that is of interest to a student, maybe they're not quite sure what they want to do. They want to do something general and technology. 
sometimes an IT degree um, might be a good choice for them. Uh, Tierney's right. I mean, look at the curriculum, uh, deep dive it a bit, uh, reach out to myself, Tierney, or our, uh, our, um, our, our recruiting team. But I think it's important that, you know, most of our students come out of the technical world. So we, you know, we have these pathway agreements that work very well from our, our uh, community college partners. But in our case, we actually, you know, and in Tierney's, we'll actually take students that are from the social science and humanities. So if you go to my website, for example, in cyber, there's actually three courses listed at Nova that we ask students to take who don't have a technical background. There's two reasons for that. One, we see if they have uh, uh, an affinity, it's hardware, software, Unix, Linux. Um, you know, we see, first of all, do they have affinity? And second of all, it gives them an opportunity um, in an, to decide whether they wanna get in that field. Um, this is kind of the thing you'll be doing. And if, you, if you're excited by that, um, then uh, come on over to the, to the program. Um, I, I think there's a lot of money in cyber and um, you know, it's a massively growing field, but ultimately, you know, if you're coming to university, you're looking for a career. And I always say to students, ask yourselves the big questions first. What kind of life do you want to have? Do you want to have a family? Do you want to travel? Is money important to you? Kind of ask yourself some of those life questions. Do you want your weekends off? <laughs> because if you're going into cybersecurity or maybe IT, you may not get your weekends off. We've leveraged cyber on top of information technology, for example. So unlike our colleagues here, um, we have a CES, uh, School of Engineering and Applied Science, and does traditional computer science, computer engineering. My program is really information technology and then cyber applied over that. Everybody needs a technologist out there in the different companies. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, the advice I give to students is kind of figure out kind of what kind of life you'd like first and then pursue that discipline and see if it fits into your life goals. That's great. Um, ODU? I kind of start here. Um, first, I, I ask the students three questions. The first question, do you know what kind of careers are available for you after graduation? And if you still remember in my PowerPoint presentation that I had a slide about different uh, careers which the student can go to after graduation and that was a small part of the career so I'm asking the student are do you interested in one of these because some students when they join computer science they think the only career for them after graduation is programming and some of the jobs they don't require programming at all minimum minimum programming some of the jobs um, like network architect and does it need programming and heavily programming um, the other thing is the um, job market. I asked the student, have you looked at the job market? And I have some also information about that, which I share with the student and the advisor, because I am not an advisor. I am the undergraduate program director. We don't have one of the advisors today. Um, I make sure that the advisor shows the students the um, job market in the coming five years or 10 years how many jobs will be available in STEM and how many jobs related to computer science. The third question will be about the uh, programming experience. Have you done any programming in the past? Have you taken any programming courses? Have you done anything technical? It doesn't have to be programming something else. What is it? Why are you passionate about that? And the last thing, which is also the rest of courses available here, because some of the students get uh, confused about how hard the computer science could be and how many math classes the student might take. The students think they will get or need to complete 50% computer science classes and 50% math classes, which is not true. Uh, we require like four or five math classes during the entire program and the rest of the classes, programming and networking, uh, um, other things related to computer science. And so this is the information and the advice that I give to the student before they decide to join computer science or not. Inora? Thank you. Um, so I will ditto just about everything that's been shared so far. Um, looking at the curriculum is extremely important. Um, as a professional advisor, I actually started my career at the community colleges doing career advising. Um, so it's a topic near and dear to my heart. It is also something key to progression through a school of cybersecurity major. 
particularly because we are, again, an interdisciplinary studies model, um, which means there are quite a number of choices, yay, but more so a lot of decisions to be made. And the only way to do that appropriately and with any kind of long-term impact is to have information. An informed decision is the only good decision you'll ever make. Um, so we start with both our freshmen, new transfers, graduate students, wherever you're joining us, um, fairly heavily with the career advising. In fact, most of my students will be assigned a professional advisor before making the transition to faculty advising. So we ensure we have time to walk through not only some of the, um, I'll say, higher education administrative things they need to be aware of, but also there's very key developmental points. Um, I will share a couple of links here in the chat in a moment that I believe are free and accessible to all students. We have a few other services on campus, like a, a focus a quiz inventory students can take. Uh, but again, I think the three most important factors to consider are impact, ability, and interest. Um, interest, of course, speaking to exploring those curriculums. Ability, speaking to what it is you enjoy doing and potentially identifying areas of growth you would need. Um, and then that impact is what we all care about, that post-graduation placement. What is it, again, we're getting out of this curriculum we're following? Um, I find that between universities and honestly, even within ODU's pool of programs, it can be very difficult to figure out, you know, what's the difference with a CS degree that may take some cyber-focused courses or a cyber degree that takes CS courses. Our College of Business is actually where our IT program is housed, so that's a little bit different than other IT programs out there. And navigating some of these, uh, I'll say, higher ed or college systems that honestly sometimes we don't understand can be very challenging. So always ask questions, find your resources. Um, at ODU, advising is very keyed into those services, but we do, again, have our wonderful partners in the Transfer Center as well, as well as faculty advisors to support. Um, but I did want to mention, because I think we all um, touched on the importance, again, of the career placement. Um, so three links in the chat. One is cyberseek.org. I would be surprised if my co-presenters hadn't heard of this one. Uh, it's one of my favorite resources to go through to both look at current job placement in the field. They have a heat map that's just amazing. Uh, it's the reason why I can tell you there are over half a million jobs in the nation, 58,000 of those being in the state of Virginia alone. Uh, it also has a beautiful career pathways map. Um, so cyber, again, is kind of like a, a quilt or a kaleidoscope, but you get to decide sometimes where those panels go. And it's all about, again, what do you want to do and how do we get you there? Um, what can I do with this major is along similar lines. You can pull up different programs. This is non-college specific. It's just larger, uh, big picture, where you can also find information about how certain degrees may link to certain career pathways. And then the ONET interest profiler, we're missing a letter before that star, is one of my favorite things to go to. It takes a little bit longer to complete. Um, it's sort of an interest inventory as well as a skill inventory. Um, but ONET is just an amazing system. It's linked to the Department of Labor and uh, Statistics where it actually will take what you report into the system and give you a list of careers that may match your interest to explore more. Uh, but I cannot recommend enough taking a peek at that CyberSeq website. It's one of my favorite things ever. Those answers were amazing. Thank you all for that. I loved that it concluded with the former career advisor um, talking about that exploration. What we're asking you today to, to do is kind of do the, the Cliff Notes version of that career exploration. I've clicked on all of these links, Lenora, and I plan to just play around with them, though I'm very happy in my current career, so I'm not actually going to switch into an IT field. Um, but we, I am glad that these links will be available for those also watching the recording. Um, but I'd also like to ask you for the, both on the George Washington side and the ODU side, for a short form version with each of your programs, like what types of jobs does this particular program lead to? And George Washington and ODU, I, I know each of you are presenting two different programs today. So what types of jobs does this program lead to? And then connected with that, how do you help students prepare for those jobs? Are there internship opportunities or job placement assistance? And I know in both cases, you've touched on these questions already, but if I could present them uh, again, because they're, they're such a central part of students' um, exploration and decision-making. Um, and so ODU, I know you just wrapped up, but I'm gonna start with ODU this time. And Lenora, you might just continue kind of or, or wrap up what you, what you were saying before about this. So types of jobs and then the support students get in um, finding those jobs and internships. 
Absolutely. Um, so all of ODU's majors, for anyone who's list, uh, interested, have an academic program page on our website. Um, they look exactly like this. Um, and in addition to a bit of small information about the program and some highlights, we do actually have for every major on campus a list of common careers. Um, expanding off of this resource, however, um, I find that list to be a little bit limited, but it's out there if you want to look at it. Um, within our programs, we have students who have gone into cyber policy, working at private companies and also government agencies, um, operations management, and actually supply chain management is an area that's growing. Um, here in Hampton Roads, we have the uh, Dollar Store or Dollar Tree corporate headquarters uh, in Chesapeake. So we actually get a lot of students in addition to Port of Norfolk and all the different uh, shipping places on in the area going again into that operations management. We find uh, areas of finance, actuary sciences, um, and even just record um, safety to be a huge area, both for finances and the medical fields. Of course, there are data centers all over the state of Virginia. I think our state may be the highest for growth of data centers, but I bet you guys see more of that up in Nova. Uh, and then we do have the Navy base close by. There's an FBI headquarters here locally. Um, so it's, it's a fairly big bridge between private, um, state, and federal in terms of placement, um, networking, another huge one we're seeing. And then cloud computing has been something on the rise recently as well. We are in the department focusing a bit more on some areas of overlap, um, AI and machine learning, partnering with our CS department, and actually bio cybersecurity um, and areas with biometric security is something we're seeing a lot more of on campus recently as well with visiting lecturers and uh, topics courses where we put that out. In terms of support, um, ODU in general has a career development center, which is our main one-stop shop for all things career. We also have an office we call MICO that opened last semester. It's the Monarch uh, Internship and Co-op office, specifically focused on pre-graduation placement, again, in internships and co-ops. And then in the department, as I mentioned, we have a mandatory experiential learning requirement pre-graduation, which typically we encourage internship for as the default option with a backup for research and entrepreneurship projects. We recently hired an internship director who's a full-time faculty member with a career in the field, well, career Navy, um, IT, and then she's actually uh, owned a few, owned a few, helped manage a few nonprofits, um, as well as AFSIA, the Armed Forces I'm going to call it organization, but there's a lot more letters that I'm missing. And then I just recently onboarded within our advising center, supporting the IDS schools, a career and work-based learning coordinator who is available more as a career advisor to students. Um, and then I mentioned our internship clinic already. We also, of course, have the ITS department on campus, which I believe hires and provides internships to IT, CS, computer engineering, as well as cybersecurity. And I think I got everything. Okay, um, I'll start by sharing my screen because I have a couple of slides here to share with you. Um, we are in the spring break and I am holding this uh, uh, presentation from my uh, home. And I think it's loud outside because the person who's cutting the grass is just right at this room right now. <laughs> so I hope it's not very loud for you. Um, this is the statistics from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And uh, you can see that the number or the percentage of the jobs in 2028 uh, predicted in 2028 will be about 76%. And this is in the STEM jobs. Um, in order to be specific about what kind of careers the students can do after the graduation, it's a huge number of opportunities. I showed that in my first presentation. Um, for example, the student can be software engineer, network architect, data architect, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, researcher, data manager, software manager, and so on. So these are the things which are available. We always discuss that with the students. Um, Lenora just touched based on the uh, career service, which we had here in our um, university, at our university. And these are the things which we help the student with. I don't have much to say about that because actually Lenora helped me a lot. She covered a lot about the topic. All right. Thank so you please... so much. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tierney. I was just going to pass it over to you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So for um, GW, um, I'll speak about I, our IT program. Um, as 
some of you mentioned earlier, there are many jobs in the Northern Virginia area. So that's where we are located. And so our students typically stay in the area for uh, one of the many tech jobs in the area, federal agencies, government contracting firms. Our IT degree, as we mentioned earlier, is a broad view of different IT topics. So therefore our students tend to branch out um, choose an area that they're interested in and focus on that area in their jobs. So we will see our students update, obtain job titles such as software engineer, software tester, technical analyst, data analyst, cloud computing. And, and speaking of um, assisting students, um, we at GW in our College of Professional Studies, we do have a dedicated career service director who will meet with our students one-on-one -on -one to assist them with helping with their resume, um, preparing for interviews. Another thing I wanna mention is our GW students. We are located, our campuses are in Virginia with College of Professional Studies, but our students are considered to be a full-fledged DW student. So that means that they certainly have the ability to go to our DC campus take advantage of all of the career services um, that are offered there, participate in job fairs that are offered at our DC campus or any other job related activities. Yeah, thank you, Tierney. Um, yeah, I mean, Nicole Mintz is our director and of uh, career services and, and I can't say enough good things about her. We also have success coaches, which is, um, which is a great asset that it, it's someone the students can uh, can actually build a relationship with other than their advisors, um, which is uh, a super add-on. Um, within regard to cybersecurity, like my colleagues that have spoken here today, the field is vast. Um, we, you know, we can go through a list line of, of titles for jobs, but I think what, what we've decided to do is in our curriculum, we identify these certain groups of, of, of classes, cloud security and red team, blue team, and you know, compliance, GRC, and so on. So one of the great things about the program then is students can get a bit of, a, of everything. It's a very traditional kind of survey undergraduate program. And we're hoping that once the student uh, finds a specialization within the curriculum, uh, then they can look at either graduate schools or certain certifications, maybe go to our colleagues at, uh, you know, ODU for one of their master's programs or Georgetown or something. We, we like to have that kind of, because uh, it's so much in this industry specialization of labor. And, you know, so that's the way we kind of view it is we don't expect all students to be really technically proficient. Some will be proficient in governance, risk and compliance and policy and law and, and risk and threat assessment. Others will be highly technically skilled. Um, so, you know, we hope that the student comes out of the program with a desire to either look at certain certifications or graduate programs that kind of focus uh, their interests a little bit more. But, um, you know, I think in turn, the great thing about a university degree though, especially whether it's from our colleagues at UDM or even our, our friends at NOVA, is once a student graduates and they have some level of, of knowledge in the technical field, it's so, you know, it diversifies so to so many places that we would never think it would go. Um, so they carry with them a great amount of knowledge and, um, it, you know, I think it makes them good, good employees, uh, because they kind of have the, their fingers in so many different pies, you know? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we're going to change gears just a little bit, um, and talk about how to apply to these various programs, um, for the advisors that are here with us today. I know this information is, um, some of what they're looking for. And so, you know, how do you apply to your program? Um, do the students apply directly to your school or department or is it through your college or university? Um, is it open to anyone that wants to enroll? How competitive is it? Um, and also, and I think most of you touched on this, but what department um, is your program in within your university? That can be helpful information when advisors are trying to, you know, find more information about your um, programs. And so Dr. White, if you wanna start Again, if that's okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. As I'm looking at the names, I see uh, Cheryl Scott uh, here. She's representing IT and, and Lynn McKnight represents my program in recruiting. 
Um, I know I'm not going to do well in this spot. That's why I always have those people speak. But um, we, we are in the College of Professional Studies, both Tierney and my program in the College of Professional Studies. And, and I think the title really represents what we do in this particular college. We are one of 14 colleges at the university or colleges or schools. Um, we do have our own entry port uh, for applications. It's unique in that. Um, and we also have rolling enrollments. Uh, so students can apply to us anytime. And I would recommend, I did place uh, uh, Lynn's uh, contact information. I think Tierney, you did the same for Cheryl. Um, I think they would all be better to speak uh, to this issue than me. But um, yes, we do have our own port. Uh, students apply to us. The turnover rate, or rather the turnaround rate, is actually relatively quickly. Once that student pushes the button to submit their application, we can get them turned around probably within about less than two weeks. And in doing so, that gives students an opportunity to kind of forecast out the next few months of their life, talk to employers, get those dates. My program always has the classes on the exact same dates. So my students can project out five consecutive semesters, fall, spring, summer, fall, spring. They know the classes are always going to be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning. So um, it works very well for an adult population. But yeah, we have our own portal. Um, and I do recommend people reach out to Lynn or Cheryl. And, and Tierney, you can fill in everything I've forgotten. Yeah, so everything sounds great, Dr. White. Um, I would just add, we can put our links to the portal in the chat. Um, as Dr. White mentioned, we have an application portal for the cyber program and then a separate one for the IT program. We can put those links directly in the chat. Um, and those are both coming from our College of Professional Studies in GW. I already did that. All right, wonderful, thank you. Thank you. And then um, ODU, if we can uh, hand it over to you and if you could include um, if the application date or excuse me, if the application process is different or, you know, what are the dates associated with that? Um, I can start. Um, our department is actually in the computer in the College of Science. And the students apply to the university, but they have to make sure that in the application, it is actually meant to be for the College of Sciences. Our program is open for every student to apply, not restriction. We have not restriction. And the key uh, part here is how many credits will be transferred for the students. Um, we expect the student to complete the, the student have completed the mathematical background in high school. However, if they haven't, they can be placed to take more math classes in our department. Um, how competitive okay, uh, it is, uh, actually we're trying to accept most of the students, okay, but I, um, there is restriction on the GPA for sure. Um, I do not remember the exact number for the GPA, but uh, we have a little bit of restriction here about that. Um, it's available again, as I said at the beginning, that we are very close to the naval base and the military bases here. So we're trying to accept as many as we can because we need to honor these students. We need to offer them help because they are actually keep moving from a place to a place. Most of them either in the military for five years or 10 years and they look for a career after they finish their duties with the military. So we're trying to make it as easy as we can for these students. Thank you. So yes, again, the cybersecurity program is a component of the School of Cybersecurity, which is a division of the IDS schools on campus. I have a very fun business card. Um, our program can be applied through through the general ODU portal, which I think um, Tamara shared. And then we also do accept the Common App. If you're applying to other universities, um, you could submit to ODU there. Our program itself, our majors within cybersecurity, do not have um, any additional applications or admission requirements. However, we do monitor degree progression fairly seriously in the advising office. Um, key components there include completion of composition courses, the first two Englishes, mathematics, uh, minimum of pre-calculus with additional math required based on major and course selection, and then programming. Um, particularly Python is the language we use in our program. Um, oh, and Linux systems, huge. Um, those are sort of the key things to get students to that junior, senior standing and then progression through graduation. 
So again, no extra application or um, requirements as you're coming in, but there are some classes we look out for, and you will not be able to graduate in any sort of uh, proficient way without the completion of those courses. Again, with the perfect segue to my next question. Um, so we want to find out how can students best prepare for this program so that our advisors can help them do that. Um, do you have a transfer guide on the portal yet for your programs? And if not, you know, there is still time to do that. Um, are there special requirements? And again, Lenore, you kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, you know, are there any prerequisite math courses? Um, I know that's something that, you know, a lot of students, they might be interested in computers, but, but maybe math isn't strong. And so that's something um, I know advisors are curious about. Um, but are there any are there any prerequisites, including math, um, that students should be aware of prior to application and transfer? And if you want to uh, start us off again, ODU, that'd be great. I'll jump in as a quick segue. Um, in terms of uh, specific courses, as mentioned, mathematics and programming will be two of the biggest, I think, shared between CS and our programs. Um, I do like to touch on mathematics when students come in for individual uh, appointments more heavily because there is such a variety of required math um, in the cybersecurity programs in particular. Um, students in my security degree could stop with pre-calculus one. They could continue on to ordinary or um, ODE is what I'll say because I'm not even going to try that today. Um, so again, huge variety. Um, we do have transfer guides on our portal as well as four-year curriculum models for transfer students. Those include the transferable associates, as well as um, the articulation agreements, the applied associate pathway in. Um, one thing I love about that is we have had the four-year plans, I think, since I started as an undergraduate at ODU since 2009. Um, so those are sort of something we've been very proud of, and that website is updated regularly by our transfer services office. We do also have, for students who maybe aren't coming in with a completed associate's degree, a guide to general education courses from the VCCS, also included in our transfer portal, and a course-by-course -course equivalency system where you can look up just about anything uh, from the community college system, as well as other four-year universities to see how do you, ODU has approached those courses in the past. And then there is an evaluation model for courses we haven't addressed before, as well as a separate model for JSTs or joint services transcripts. I always like to mention that as well. Um, again, Transfer Portal or our Transfer Center's webpage is probably the best place to start. They'll have information about all of our programs. I would just like to jump in for really quick. Um, since I work for Transfer Initiatives, um, we are in the, I did put in Cybers Curriculum Sheet and Computer Science in the chat. We are um, in the works of loading them all and figuring out when they'll be loaded to Transfer Virginia, but we do have them. Um, on our common, um, if you just go to our main page, you will see it. I'll post that as well. You can look up any um, any um, major through there as well, but hopefully that will be updated soon. Um, we have a transfer guide that Tamara just shared the link for that. And I'll just add one more thing is that uh, we have a prerequisite mass, as Lenora said as well, we share the pretty much most of the uh, prerequisite. However, uh, if a student come with uh, no background, not enough background in math, we created one credit hour uh, computer science class, CS115, and it doesn't require any prerequisite, any math prerequisites, just one credit hour, because sometimes the students will come with, without enough math background, they need to study math for a year or so, and these students need to take um, some computer science classes to know what, what they will study, what they will continue on. So we created for this student one credit hour in Python, uh, programming language, a class. And this class is very, very interesting and it's attractive to many students. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tierney, do you want to go next? Yes, so for the GWIT program, to best prepare for this degree, a student would need an associate's degree or 60 transferable credits, and that must include the gen eds we mentioned earlier, English, two social science, one art humanities, four credit lab science. As for math, we only require a math 154 or higher. Um, and that's because in our IT program, we're going to be teaching stats 
as part of our courses along with our programming. In terms of a transfer guide, um, we do have this information on the Transfer Virginia webpage. That we do have a GW webpage on the Transfer Virginia site, and then we have the details for the IT program on the Transfer Virginia site that I will be dropping in the chat. And yeah, I everything that Tierney said, um, the only difference is that we do have the AAS degree as a transferable into my program. Um, the, the addition that we have for that, for that particular one is the four credit lab science because the current uh, manifestation of NOVA's does not have that in it. But we have uh, pathway agreements with um, the technical division of NOVA. So we have pathways. Once we evaluated the curriculum, we just uh, created the pathway. So basically, anyone graduating with a NOVA AS or AAS, all 60 of their credits are transferred to my program. Um, the pathway's already been established. We, you're um, a Southern States accredited. Uh, we're actually middle states at GW, but you have full accreditation. Um, we, like I said, we, uh, we only ask for the general math requirement because unlike our computer science colleagues, Listen, once you started introducing letters and numbers together, that's when I gave up. So, um, but but uh, no, um, we're very we're very pleased with uh, the math requirement that that uh, Nova produces for their two degrees that they transfer. Um, so we're 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 that's the way we do it here at C at uh, Cyber. And one of the nice things, Scott, I know you mentioned earlier that naturally you work much more closely with Nova because they're your neighbors. Um, but with Transfer Virginia, it's all statewide. So the things that you're saying about NOVA also apply to our community colleges throughout the state. Um, so that is one of the, the benefits and goals of Transfer Virginia is to make sure that students in all parts of the state are looking at four-year completion opportunities in all parts of the state. Um, so. I really appreciate today the information that you've provided about your programs, um, which kind of on paper sounded similar. And I loved how you highlighted the differences between and among them. Um, we don't have much time and I haven't seen any questions pop into the chat. I know a lot of people are watching this on YouTube. Um, when we planned this, today was not um, as much of it a day off for primary day as it has become subsequently. Um, but do we have any questions from the audience? So I want to very enthusiastically thank all of our panelists who came today and shared information about this. Um, as I mentioned, it will, the recording will go up on the Transfer Virginia portal and we'll link to our YouTube page and we'll also be sharing it directly with the transfer advisors throughout the state um, who can share it with students. Um, so thank you again, all of you, um, for your participation in Transfer Virginia and your work developing transfer guides for the portal and information for the portal and for sharing this information with all of our advisors. Thank Thank you, you so much. much.